Hey, good evening, guys. Um, hey, Stacy. How you doing, young lady? Oh, let me let me. Uh, okay. I unmuted your mic. Can you hear me? Can't unmute really, that because they talk to you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You unmuted now. Hi, how are you? Whatever, man. Right, let's comment. Oh, oh, here we go. All right. <clears throat> Good evening, guys. How you doing? Whew. All right. I am so, so learning how to. Uh, click on comment so you click on my screen. All right. Okay. All right, anyway, I'm gonna start because tonight is starting a little bit late. Uh, let me get uh, some of you uh, that this is your first time here. Uh, can you hear me, Stacy? Okay, cool. Now, if you have any comments or questions, please put them in the uh, comment box uh, so, you, so I can answer any comments or questions or address anything, anything like that, okay? Uh, the way the format is, is that for the first 15 or 20 minutes, um, I will give you I uh, speak on the particular topic for, for tonight, which is embrace your process, embracing your process. And then at the end, if you stick, or, or at the end, uh, I do a Q&A whereby I, um, I answer any questions you may have, any questions, concerns, or anything like that, okay? So let's jump back, jump right into it. Now, I have the green screen up. Because when you see, I'm going to put to put this, of course, on my uh, page as a video. And when I put it on a video, um, wow, what did I do there? I'm sorry, I'm still learning this thing. Uh, when I put it on video, um, you'll see that the background will be different. Okay? All right. So now I'm not going to wear the glasses all the way through. It's just that sometimes I have to put the glasses on if I'm going to see, okay? Um, if, like I said, uh, when you, if you're tuning in, um, so all the way out, okay. If you're tuning in, uh, please just put a comment and say, hey, Jeff, I'm here, okay? So I can see that you're here and that, uh, um, and that you're watching, okay? All right, uh, good evening, everyone, okay. Good evening, okay, we got a, Couple. All right. There we go. All right. Cool. Hey, Miss Shira. How are you? Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, first, <clears throat> God, forgive me, man. I slept with my clothes on and I got a little sweaty. And what happens is I get a sore throat when that happens. Anyway. Let's talk. First of all, um, in becoming the best you ever, or U2.0, what you always want to understand is that U2.0 is different than U1.0 or presently. Um, one of the biggest situations with me is that I struggled to embrace the fact that I presently was not good enough to obtain what I wanted. Now, what I meant by that is I didn't mean that as in value, I'm not a valuable person or anything like that. But what I what it what I meant was, well, what it really means is that you in your present state has brought about your, your particular place in time or, or how you want to put that. So you have to understand that if you're gonna be if you wanna go somewhere different, if you wanna be somewhere different, if you wanna experience something different. You have to become a different person to experience that or to hold that or maintain that. It's like, let me give you an example, even with me working out and training, okay? When I first started training, I had no concept of the fact that a person that's bigger than me, stronger than me, or where my goal was physical in, in, in physical fitness, the person I was could not be the one controlling my actions. Because at pre the present, I was 6'2", 171, which is a slim type of guy. I want to be more muscular. I want to be bigger. So in order for me to be bigger, I had to become bigger. I had to embrace all the, pro the, the, the process 
of going from a 171 pound guy thinking to a 215 or 220 or 230 pound guy thinking. I had to see myself different. I had to think different. I had to program myself differently. And so that I could program in habits that would bring me to my particular goal in space and time, okay? I had to um, keep retrain how I think. I had to retrain how I move. I had to retrain how I eat. Hey, Flo, how you doing? That's my big sister, y'all. My sister is tuning in. And, hey, how you doing, Flo? Um, I had to retrain my thinking. If I didn't retrain my thinking, I would not have moved anywhere different. Um, and, and what's crazy is even the Bible says, right? <clears throat> the Bible says, uh, I beseech you that bread by the mercy of God and all that stuff. And then it says, but uh, be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So if you don't change your mind, you can't stay where you want to go. That's what's wrong with the lottery. See, the lottery increases your income, and it doesn't change you. So even, even though you have more money, you're still thinking broke. So if you don't hurry up and become a person that can hold on to I, one of my mentors, Jim Rome, said this. He said, if you get a million dollars, you better hurry up and become a millionaire. Because that's the only way you get to keep the money. That's 100,000% correct. I, I was wondering, one of the things that started all, all this change and me doing things differently and everything was that I looked at my life and I said, hold on a second. I don't drink, don't smoke, don't do this, don't do that, all this kind of stuff. You know, no, I'm, I'm, I'm no, no prison record and all this kind of stuff. Why am I homeless? Why am I struggling with just keeping a roof over my head? Well, I had never really, I never got understood or embraced the whole concept of there is a process, Jeff, of taking you from poverty to wealth. There's a, there's a process taking you from someone always renting to a homeowner. That's two totally different thinking processes. <clears throat> I heard a rapper say this. It was funny. He said it. He said, yo, when I was poor, man, I was a Democrat. <laughs> he said, well, when I got rich. I say, man, I, I started thinking, man, man that Republicans got, got something going on. And what he, what he was saying was, it's a different thought process. And so I have to start retraining how I think. I have to start meditating on success. Man, and a lot of it was financial success because that was the main area of my life that I was flunking terribly. I was horrible. Budgeting, are you kidding me? Budgeting money? bank account, a consistent bank account. Are you kidding me? These were things like, oh, okay, I thought they were luxuries. <laughs> that was my thinking. So I would get a, a nice place. I would get a nice job, lose a nice job, lose the nice place over and over and over and over and over. And then what, what happened was I, I really embraced, Jeff, who you are right now are not is not good enough. You have to become better. Or as we say on the show, you have to become you, Jeff 1.0, have to become Jeff 2.0. Okay. There was a time in my when I was working out and training. I was always, you know, I was always in the physical fitness, but I was a thin guy. In order for me to now grow and become the 215, 200, well, I'm 215 now, but 220 and 225, 230, I have to change my thinking. There's no way I'm going to maintain a 230-pound physique thinking like I'm 171. When I was 171, I could eat chips, I could eat this, I could eat that, da, 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 my energy ain't right, so what? Bloom, 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 bloom. When I got 215, like right now, 215, mm -mm, I have to eat on schedule. It's not, I don't eat, and, and, and I don't eat for enjoyment. I eat for, on a schedule. I don't even eat when I'm hungry. I eat on a schedule. And that's the only way I maintain 215, slim waist, so on and so forth. I don't work out when I feel good. I work out when it's on my schedule. I look at my vision board. I, put, I used to have my, all my vision boards in my, in my gym, right? But now I go in my gym every now and again. So I put my vision boards in my bedroom and it changed everything. Because when I get up, I see them. I see my goal. I see my vehicle. Oh, and I just, I just have to, I just got my new vehicle, and you know, I got a little vehicle and everything. And I was one of the goals and dreams on the board. Now it's in my life. 
See, but it's step by step by step. It was funny because I had someone in church say to me, uh, uh, he said to me, he says, Jeff, I loved you so much more when, you know, when you was just preaching the gospel. I said, you talking about when I was homeless, right? Coming to church. He said, oh, uh, yeah. I said, right. When I now, now that I'm not, <laughs> you think I'm not preaching anymore. He says, no, no, no. You just stop listening. I am still preaching. I, I am still promoting. I am still teaching. It's just that, that you want that same old, same old, because that's where you're comfortable. But I'm telling you, your process, if it's not making you uncomfortable, it's probably not your process. You would never make, do you understand that the opposite of success is not failure? The opposite of success is comfortability. Because when you get comfortable, you won't move. You know, if you're in the bed, you're all warm, and you got that comforter on you, and it's all good, you don't want to move. You got to get them go to, you got to let them sheets go. You don't want to let them go. Why? You're comfortable. But when you it gets cold and you got one sheet on you and you trembling up under the bed, guess what? You will get your butt up, go to that closet and get that comforter and bring it back to the bed. Because on the opposite of success is comfort the, the, the opposite of success is comfortability. I don't know if you guys saw the movie um, The Dark Knight Rises, Batman, right? Dark Knight Rises. Bane was fighting Batman. And they were both trained in the same area. But Bane said something to Batman that was so powerful. He said, Batman, success has defeated you. Because we were trained by the same people. There's no way I ought to beat you up like this. But I can beat you up because you got comfortable fighting these little gangsters. That's not trained. Now I'm trained like you are. You can't stand in the same ring with me because you got comfortable. See, you can, and, and, and I'm going to tell you something. When, when I first got this apartment and everything, I got comfortable. Right before the pandemic hit, I got comfortable. I was no longer striving and this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. I was sitting back. I was good. Shoot, my rent was being paid. Boom, I had my rent locked down. I was living in a very nice apartment. I had my car, and I was doing this. And I was, there was money in the bank and everything, and guess what? In May, I, wrecked, I totaled my car. <laughs> My insurance was screwed up, so it was a total loss. I still, I, my, I was backward on my uh, um, financing, so I owed the company still ten thousand. I was no longer driving the car. My the money I was making from Lyft and Uber went away. The money I was making from personal training went away because of the pandemic. The money I was making wholesaling went away. Three of my seventy five percent of the money I was making went away. And the thing was, here's the thing. And one of my mentors said this. He said, Jeff. If you don't make yourself uncomfortable with your dreams, your goals, and your aspirations, life will make you uncomfortable with its situation. So you have to ask yourself, who are you, who are you gonna, how do you, I have to ask myself, do I want to make myself uncomfortable going toward my dreams, goals, and aspirations, or do I want life to make me uncomfortable where I might not like what it's bringing to me? So I started to take control of that. And another thing is, and I'm saying this is why I believe and I, I'm so powerful on vision boards, is because a vision board is something that you want. It's where you are not. That makes you uncomfortable. One of the shame, shameful things I think in health and fitness today is they brought up, a, they created a word called fat shaming. And it's a negative word. Oh, you fat shaming me. Oh, you fat shaming me. Well, what we got to understand is if you're not, if you, if you're, uh, if they give it to you to feel comfortable where you are, you won't move. This is why everyone is over obese. Everyone is struggling and, you know, surgery is on, on, on an all-time high and everything because everyone wants to bypass the process of becoming better so you can do better. Become better and you'll live better. Become better and you'll date better. Become better and you'll earn better. It has nothing... You are a co-creator with God. Now, I, when I first said to someone, they said, oh, that's blasphemous. God is a creator. I'm not a creator. You're a liar. Or you're, or you're naive. You don't get it. You are a creator. Don't tell me God pays your mortgage. He doesn't pay your mortgage. He has given you the ability, given you the wisdom, given you the knowledge, and given you the guidance to pay your bills. When you have a child and you raise that child up, when that child goes out and gets an apartment that's an attribute and maintains it, 
that is a attribute, that is a, a praise to the parent because you taught them to be responsible. You taught them how to do what they need to do. Well, and, and, and mind you, if you still paying your child's rent and all this kind of stuff, when that child is 40 and 50 and 60, something's wrong. Well, it's the same thing with God. God is saying, I'm going to give you the word, show you exactly what to do. Any leader of the ship, what guidance you need, I'm going to help you do it. But then you got to go out and do it yourself. Jesus couldn't stay. If he had stayed, the disciples would never have been who they became. Who they became. He had to leave. And they were like, oh, oh, what, what were you going to do? Yeah, but they all grew up. And do you know that every disciple died a violent death? Every disciple stood up and gave his life for the gospel. Why? Because they grew up. Doubting Thomas was no, no longer doubting Thomas. Peter was not the just sprout off, talk guy, say whatever in his mind. They came to a place of maturity through a process. And when you embrace your process, you become all that you were meant to be. I was talking to someone the other day and they said to me, well, I don't want to be rich. And I look at them and go, really? And they go, yeah, man, I don't need all that money. I just need this, that, and the other. You, and to me, and I looked at them and I said, do you understand how selfish that is? I said, I didn't say you had to get rich for you to keep all the money. You could get rich and then go build housing for the homeless. You could get rich and go build wells in Africa. What money simply does is gives you options to now be, be all that you can be and help as many as, as I, I, someone said, why do you want a Mercedes? I said, I want a Mercedes because of the fact that my children don't understand what a Mercedes is. I want a big house because they don't understand it. They haven't seen that. And they, and they really haven't seen a black man get it. So I want to show them that, guess what? There's greater things for you. If Michael Jordan only scored 15 points a game, which is a decent amount of points, guess what? He would have been living underneath his privilege. If Serena Williams had only been champion one time, it would have been beneath her privilege. You have you, the, the process of life is you going from where you are to your greatest potential. And that's what makes a proud parent. I, 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 you know, and I ain't saying this to call my sister here, but my sister has a daughter who's a doctor. That is a tribute to you as a parent that your daughter is a doctor. Um, 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 our children are our report cards. See, but you set an example. I, you know, um, when when uh, I remember coming up in school, a lot of things were easy for me, like. Uh, book reports and all this kind of stuff and so on and so forth. But that was a tribute to, I'm going to keep it real with you, my older sister, because she didn't let me go to bed. She would she would keep me all up night doing problems over and over and over and over and over and over. So things got easy for me. She had me doing book reports and book reports wouldn't even do. Help me. And all of this was my process to bring me to who I am today. And I'm so thankful for that. Wasn't thankful when I was in the midst of the process. Absolutely not. Wishing all kinds of evil stuff. I hope a car hit her and all that. Kind of, yeah, wishing all that crazy stuff. But now I'm seeing it as a mature person. Okay? So embracing your process, first understanding your process, you know, because I'm going to tell you something. You can't be what you don't see. This is a, the, traveling is never so supposed to be about a vacation. Traveling is supposed to be about education. Understanding other people's and places and things. It expands you as a person. I was talking to a guy the other day. You know what he said to me? He said, I travel all the time. I go to New York. He living in Jersey. I said, brother, that's not traveling. I said, until you got an accent, you ain't traveled. He couldn't believe it. I said, brother, that's not traveling. And I said, traveling is about education, becoming someone greater, understanding new people and places and things and so on and so forth. Understand that there's a part in you that you need to access. There's great gifts, talents, and abilities inside of you that God wants you to share with the world. But until certain things, you don't embrace that, you never can become it. Embrace your process. I know it's uncomfortable. Embrace your process. I know you don't want to do it. Embrace your process because that is the only real way. Because your fear, I heard a, um, Lisa Nichols say this. She's a motivational speaker. She said, your fear, fear is not to die. It's not death. Your fear is dying 
before anyone really ever knew you were here. Your fear is not fulfilling all that your creator put in you to do. It would be a shame to go to heaven and then you walking up with one notebook and God and saying, see this room right here? And he's showing you all these powerful things and all this stuff and all this stuff. And you're sitting there going, wow. And God is saying, that's what you could have gotten if you had embraced the full process of that I, I meant for you. So um, I usually go, like I said, 15, 20 minutes about the process and so on and so forth. If you have any questions in the Q&A section, it's the, uh, you can uh, comment, send a, a question, or if you have a question or anything like that, I can answer it for you. And, and, and just, just to let you know, you know, if, you know, if there's anything you need to know, anything like that. Oh, Flo and Stacy, you guys stay for the whole, um, the whole, the whole show. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send you a free uh, audio book of Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. It's a classic. It was one of two books that I had in my bag when I was sleeping on the subways, and I saw I had an epiphany moment, and I started embracing Think and Grow Rich, and I started embracing well the Word of God, and um, that started the whole process of taking me from sleeping on the trains to you know, from nowhere to almost somewhere. <laughs> you know, uh, it, ain't, it ain't like I have arrived, but I'm a lot further uh, than I was because I, I, I see people all the time it's still homeless. I said, man, but for the grace of God, but for me embracing my process and embracing the fact that, no, God is not going to get you off these trains, Jeff. You are going to make a different choice. God is not going to pay your bills and pay your rent and pay your now, no, your car note or nothing like that. No, he's giving you the power, the energy, the knowledge, the wisdom, the work ethic to do it yourself. Your biggest praise. Do you know the biggest praise you can get, get for God? The biggest praise is you fulfilling all of your process. And I'm looking down like a proud father saying, ooh, look at my daughter go. Ooh, look at my son go. Exactly. And look at how much went against him and he's still doing his thing. Man. 59 years old, and he's still going hard. Still running around doing his thing, doing running his little marathons, lifting his weight. Look at him. Exactly. That's the biggest praise you can give to God. I, I Listen, I love the shouting and the dancing. But there was a lot of times I was shouting and dancing and right down there to the J train to go to sleep for the night. And you really think that brought any praise to God? Oh, God is a good God, but you're living on the subways. I remember Joyce Meyer said something like that years and years and years ago. Before I understood, I used to say, oh, man, that's crazy, man. You should be praising God wherever you at. Yeah, that's broke thinking. You should be praising God everywhere you at, but you shouldn't be trying to stay there. Okay. Enough of my rant, roll of my rants or whatever. Anybody have any kind of questions, concerns or anything? Um, let me talk about the next broadcast. My next broadcast is at Monday. It's on Monday. Uh, 7 a.m. and I will, we're gonna be now. I'm gonna be talking about something that I, I love to talk about. It, it, it is the process of uh, uh, the sub the subconscious mind and how it influences our thoughts and our processes and things like that. Just to give you a little taste, understand that 95% of what you do is subconscious. Only 5% is conscious. 95% is subconscious programs constantly running. You react a certain way because that's a subconscious program. You didn't have to think about it because it went through, through your conscious mind down into your subconscious, down to the oldest part of the brain, which is the basal ganglia. That's where you hold all of your philosophies, your beliefs, your ideas, your fears, and all those kind of things. And until you change yourself on the deepest part of your subconscious mind, no change will last. It will not last. That's why you have we have so many... I have Anyone has so many... Um, uh, it's so hard for us to change our habits because your habits have been ingrained down into your subconscious mind. And until you uproot those, you never change on, on, a, on, on the regular. And this is why I come against a lot of the teaching that they teach. Oh, you know, say that I am an alcoholic and da da da. As, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't accept that. The devil's a liar. I program in alcoholism, I can program it out of me. I program in po uh, 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 poverty. Because poverty is a program. You, say, you take that same poor kid, put him around wealthy people long enough, he'll start adapting quickly because his subconscious mind is constantly going to be reprogrammed. 
It's all about a program. When I changed my program, it changed my life. Instead of thinking about the Bible as a religious book, I started thinking about it as a textbook to help me succeed in life, to bring me into all that God needs me to be. When I start using it like that, it changed my world. I love to hear about Daniel and the lion's den, but can I take Daniel and the lion's den and put it into my world right now and it bring me to the next level? Or am I just hearing it because I like to hear our, our church stories and Sunday is just a good day or Sunday or Saturday is a good day to get out and just jump and shout. If it's not affecting my life in a positive way, I don't want to hear it. I'm not a young cat no more. So ladies and gents, okay, don't seem like we're going to have any questions. So Flo, thank you for, uh, this. That, that's my oldest sister, Stacey. Thank you, Flo, for showing up at, to my show and your support. I'll be seeing you Thanksgiving, hopefully. And Stacy, Flo, this is, this is, this is, this is, oh, I love this girl, man. I knew this woman back in 1981, 1981, met her when I was in the Marine Corps. Yes, and she is an angel. She, she's, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> anyway, guys, you guys have a wonderful night. Hopefully, I'll see you uh, Monday mornings with that uh, that um, uh, uh, on my morning show uh, uh, Monday at 7 a.m. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless y'all, man. I hope something I said enriched you, empowered you, enriched you, and empowered you, and motivated you, inspired you to go to that next level so that we, uh, as we say on the show, we... T by T B Y E, the best you ever. We help you become the best you ever so you can live and create your best life ever. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Bye, Nishira. Okay. End, 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 end of all times. End of all times. Oh. Touching my screen in a minute.